guys, welcome back to Diary of an Airport Bartender. Excuse my voice, I am getting over a cold, which was very fun to perform three shows over the weekend with. But it's coming back, and I'm feeling better, and it is Tuesday, and I promised I'd be back with stories. So I am. So today I'm going to tell you a couple things. I'm going to tell you about a morning shift at my bar in the airport, and then I'm also going to tell you a story that happened during a morning shift that was pretty entertaining. So... As far as morning shift are concerned, I've got three different things to tell you about them. First thing, we open at 7, and yes, people do drink at 7 in the morning. There are sometimes there are people waiting for me at my bar before I've even opened the gate, and I'm actually even open. And so I'm just going to throw this out here as a little PSA announcement. Please don't flock to my bar like little alcoholic moths before I've had a chance to set up because my resting bitch face is all bitch in the morning and I am not ready to interact with humans before, at least before I've set up my bar, especially if you're going to order a Bloody Mary and I don't have ice yet. Number two is you will be my best friend. I will, you, I will take care of you if you do not order a Bloody Mary. They are my arch nemesis to superhero bartender cartoon. I don't know. My record for them is making 18 all at once, and if I can, I prefer to make as few as possible. So if, if you can, come into my bar. Don't order a Bloody Mary, please. But if you will, I will, I will make you one. I'll make you a really good one, but they're not my favorite to make. And number three is kind of goes along with number one is let's keep the energy, at least in the first hour, to a medium range. Um, being loud in there I'm still waking up in the morning and I am not ready I know you guys are on vacation and you are excited to go and I am excited for you but I can't show it yet and I'm not ready to handle that just yet but that being said this story has some loud people and at first I was not ready for it but they ended up being really awesome so that's fine <laughs> but here we go here's my story so i have been open for a couple hours. I had been actually pretty busy that morning. And I had already finished setting up most of everything. I was cutting limes and lemons when my back was turned away from the bar. And I hear four ladies coming up. And they're like, are you open? And I just wanted to say, no, I'm not. Get out of here. I'm not ready to handle your energy right now. But I turned around and put a smile on my face and asked them what they wanted. And they got, they all wanted, well, they wanted three mimosas and a beer. And right away, awesome, you guys are great. Um, points for you, even though you're loud, because you didn't get Bloody Marys. And I find out that they're going to Vegas for a bachelorette party. Yep. The one girl in the, her sister was getting married, so they were meeting her in Vegas. And to top it all off, she was wearing a giant dick hat. In the middle of the airport and not only was it a giant dick hat it had a string on it that allowed it to go up and down so that was that was really entertaining and as I talked to her she also said that she checked a giant uh, suitcase full of penis stuff so they were they were gonna have fun that weekend <laughs> so they took care of me I took care of them but as they were sitting there another bachelorette party came up and they saw the other bachelor party and got super excited especially when they saw the giant hat so they all had to take pictures with it and then a little bit later there was a bachelor party coming that we're go was going to Portland of all places apparently it's the most strip clubs per capita area so that's where they were going and they all took pictures with the giant dick hat and then a couple other people came up and they were just so excited to see this hat that they, everybody was taking pictures of them. They were so excited and it just made the start of their trip just that much better. And I'm glad I could have been a part of it because it was pretty, it was hilarious to see. But <laughs> at first I was not ready for that much, that much excitement, but I'm glad I was there because I don't normally open on Saturday mornings, but that was, that was a great Saturday morning for me. Um... So I want to I want to know from you guys, what is I want to hear bachelor bachelorette stories from drinkers and from bartenders and servers. Like, what are your crazy things that did happen in your bar or when on your bachelor parties that you can tell that won't get you in trouble? 
and uh, leave those in the comments if I get enough. Like I said, I would love to do a drunken tale story from all of my subscribers. That would be awesome. And then, like I said, as well, um, we get to 50 subscribers. I will do a giveaway. We're almost halfway there, so that's awesome. And so, like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I will be back tomorrow with more stories and more advice on not to make your bartender hate you. So, see you next time. Thanks, guys. Bye.